Good morning, Reunion. My name is Matt. I'm one of the pastors here. I'm so glad that you joined us online this morning. Reunion is a family of churches throughout the Boston area with a simple mission of helping people find their way back to God. We really wish we could be gathering in person, but we want to do what's best for our neighbors and community. We hope everyone stays safe out there. Before we start, let me remind you of just a few things. First, I'd love for you to invite others to this online gathering. Click the share button below to share with a neighbor, family member, coworker, or friend. Chances are that you know someone else who needs encouragement and a message of hope during the season. Please go ahead and invite them. For those of you who are brand new to Reunion, let me be the first one to welcome you. We're so glad that you found us online. Our hope is that this community can be a family of you and where people can walk alongside you, no matter where you are on your faith journey. It's been great to see so many new people get connected with us recently. We'd love for you to go to our website, reunionmovement.com, and please click on the chat bubble that says connect with us. Or we can use your phone and scan the QR code using your camera and we'll take you directly to our connection card. We'll reach out to you and help you find out more about us and get you connected. You can also follow us on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. If you have, if you have something you need prayer for, please text PRAYER to 617-415-4466. Our staff and elders would love to pray for you. This morning, we'll have a time of worship with Bailey and Jessica share some short announcements. We'll have an added reading Jeff will share with us. We'll have time of communion together and then we'll wrap up with one last song and a benediction. Before Jessica and Bailey lead us in worship, we have a surprise performance this morning from our reunion virtual choir. Our choir is made up of some of our worship arts volunteers and others from our community. They rehearsed all last month for today's performance as well as a special performance during our online Christmas Eve gathering, which we'll announce later. So let's celebrate Jesus this morning by singing along to Joy to the World. to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare in room. And heaven and nature and sing, nature sing, nature sing. And heaven and heaven nature sing. Joy to the earth.
Oh, hey, sorry. Uh, my name is Nathan. I am the Somerville location pastor here at Reunion. And I just want you to know generosity is a core value at Reunion. And we're once again this year participating in Advent Conspiracy. And our goal this year is to raise $30,000 for three of our local partners. And today we highlight the work of one of those partners, an organization called Community Cooks. Community Cooks, they mobilize individuals, businesses, and churches to offer home prepared food to vulnerable neighbors in need. These home cooked meals provide nourishment for families struggling with food insecurity, for students working to improve their lives in after school programs, and individuals seeking assistance from social service agencies. See, Community Cooks envisions a community where neighbors connect with neighbors by sharing nourishment for a common benefit, which creates a more compassionate world. And as an organization, Community Cooks prepare and deliver meals that serve more than 5,100 people each month. They mobilize over 1,000 volunteers from 61 Boston area communities, and they provide support for 41 direct service partner agencies. And you can give to the mission of Reunion as well as to our Advent Conspiracy offering by clicking Give on our website or by using your phone uh, to scan the QR code uh, on the page. And that's as simple as uh, turning on your camera and pointing it to the code and it'll take you directly to our giving page. If you want to give to our Advent Conspiracy early, you can do that. You just need to collect, you need to select Advent Conspiracy from the drop down menu on our giving page. But next week, we'll actually take a special virtual offering to kick off our week of giving for our partners. So while you're doing that, uh, I have some announcements that I'd love to share with you. And it is uh, the season, and as you uh, know, the best way to spread Christmas cheer, yes, is singing loud for all to hear. And this year, you're going to be able to engage with our reunion Christmas Eve gathering from the comfort of your own home. So we'll be having our digital Christmas Eve on the 24th at 5 p.m., and we would love to see you there. And we hope that you help us spread cheer uh, and not viruses by inviting your friends and family to tune in remotely as well. And if you're new to Reunion and the Reunion community, or maybe uh, you've been around for a while, but you still just kind of feel new. Uh, and if that is you, and you're looking to get connected to the Reunion family, then uh, this next announcement is for you. In the new year, we'll be launching a new session of our Experience Reunion. Uh, this will be a digital environment where you learn about the mission, uh, who we are, and how you can, you can get, excuse me, more involved in the Reunion family. And during this event, you'll be encouraged to explore ways that God has gifted you for community and for the kingdom. So Experience Reunion will meet three Sundays in a row for about an hour each Sunday, beginning on January 17th. And if you're interested in that, you'd like some more information, you can text EXP to 617-415-4466. We are now in the second week of Advent. And at Reunion, and traditionally around the world, we have used candles as a symbol during Advent to help us remember the ancient story that we are a part of that hasn't yet reached its conclusion. Last week, we lit the candle of hope, and the second candle we'll be lighting today is the candle of joy. Olivia is going to help us join in, in the tradition to help us light the second Advent candle. Are you ready? Yes. Okay, go ahead. Christmas is a... Christmas is supposed to be a season filled with joy. We sing joy to the world and sing about being joyful and triumphant, but we often confuse joy with happiness. We look to things this season that'll make us happy, but those feelings can disappear. Our joy can only come from the presence of Jesus, who came humbly to bring joy to all the world. Jesus came as a baby, lived a life we couldn't, died a death he didn't deserve, and rose from the dead to make way for the greatest story of joy ever told. Jesus lost all hope so we could have joy. Jesus lost all joy so we could have joy. Yeah. Today, as we light the candle of joy, we remember that our joy this season is not found in presence under a tree or in our current circumstances, but in our joy found in a God who loves us enough to come to earth in weakness and vulnerability to be with us. Good. So Olivia's going to read part of the Bible next. She's going to read from Luke chapter 2, 
verses 8 through 14. Go ahead. And in the same region there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news, a great of great joy, that will be for all people. For unto you this is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lay, lying in a manger. And suddenly there were within the angel a minimum of a multitude. a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth. Peace, to, um, peace among those whom he is pleased with. Nice. So today, Olivia is lighting the candle of joy. And we hope forevermore of Jesus's kingdom to come on earth as it is in heaven today and forevermore. You got it. Would you pray with us? Father God, we all want to be joyful. But if we're honest, we too often let our joy be tied to things that are fleeting. Even in this time of celebration of the arrival of Jesus into the story of the world, we can get caught up in how we celebrate and forget why we're celebrating in the first place. God, this Christmas season, we pray that we take pause that we don't let this season pass without reflecting on the good news that came with Jesus's birth. May we reflect on what Jesus's birth and then his life and death and resurrection mean for us personally. But more importantly, may we not miss the big picture of what you are up to, that through Jesus, you're bringing a new way of life. Because of your love, you made a way for your family to be put back together. May we share that love with those around us this Christmas. And as we do, may our hearts be filled with joy. A joy tied to a better story and a love everlasting. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Hey everyone, my name is Jeff Oaks. I'm one of the pastors on staff here at Reunion. And we are in the middle of Advent season. Advent is a progression of increasing light that leads up to the birth of Jesus. And the word Advent is a Latin term. It means arrival. And so during the season, we celebrate the Advent, the arrival of Jesus, the light of the world. You might be wondering, why do we call Advent conspiracy? Well, at Reunion, we determined many years ago that the meaning of Christmas seemed to be displaced oftentimes. And instead of an awe-inspiring time of expectation and joy over the birth of a Savior, people were spending uh, to the point of drowning in a sea of debt with endless gift lists and to-do lists and events to attend and, and on and on. And December would end every year with exhaustion and a sense that we had missed the point entirely. So at Reunion, we decided to do something different. We joined a movement of other churches to change our experience of this season. And the Advent Conspiracy movement has four principles. The first is spend less, you know, say no to the commercialization our culture promotes. Don't go into debt getting everybody you know their Christmas present, right? And instead, give more. Um, 
instead of stuff to get, uh, support causes and organizations that need it, make gifts and, and spread joy and figure out ways to be creative with giving, but, but give more, spend less, worship fully, which is simply to give attention and praise to Jesus. You know, he's why we have the holiday and all the other trappings and all the other things can just turn into noise if we miss him at the center. So worship him fully. And then love all. Be, be a reflection of the heart of God. You know, he came into this world with generosity and with love for us. God so loved the world that he gave us his son. So shine like he does. Reflect that heartbeat. You know, that's that's the four pieces of this movement. And when you apply all of them, celebrating the birth of Jesus becomes an opportunity to reflect God's heart of generosity, to really fully embrace his birth. Because that's the message of Advent. It's God intervening, God arriving. It's God bursting through the darkness and bringing his light to this world. And that's why there are four candles that we associate with Advent. The first candle that we've lit is the candle for hope. The second that we light today is for joy. Next week, peace. And then on Christmas Eve, we hope you join us for that gathering. We'll light the candle for love. But today, we're going to talk about what it looks like for the coming of Christ to bring us joy. And to do that, we're going to look at this really obscure passage in Luke's gospel in chapter two. It's, you've probably never heard it before. It's possible that it's, you know, just really going to fly under the radar. So uh, are you ready? And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them. And the glory of the Lord shone round about them. And they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. Okay, so maybe you've heard it before. But let's read it again together anyway. This is Luke chapter 2, verse 8. That night there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. And they were terrified. But the angel reassured them, don't be afraid, he said. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem in the city of David. And you will recognize him by his sign. You will see a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth and lying in a manger. Suddenly, the angel is joined by a vast host of others, the armies of heaven, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and peace on earth to those with whom God is pleased. When the angels had returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, let's go to Bethlehem, let's see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. Now, usually we spend time in a section of scripture like this, considering the awe of the shepherds at this announcement, you know, how how interesting it is that God chose to appear to one of the lowliest uh, groups of people that existed on the planet at that time, right? Shepherds were outcasts. They were, they were not sleeping in snug beds like people who had the means to do so. They were out in the fields guarding the sheep. That was their job. And uh, the announcement from heaven about the birth of Jesus came to those guys. And there's all kinds of really interesting things that we could dig into about shepherds, but I don't want to uh, focus on them today. Instead, I want us to concentrate on the simplicity of what was declared that night to those shepherds. Good news that will bring great joy to all people. You know, Christmas isn't just a sentimental time of peace on earth, goodwill toward men. Every December, we seem to be bombarded by attempts to manufacture joy and peace and hope. And it's in the carols that we sing, it's in the cards that we send, and of course it's in the movies that we watch. 
I mean, whether it's Home Alone, right, with the McAllister family who are reunited on Christmas morning after leaving for France without their youngest son. Do you remember his name? It's Kevin, of course. But they make it back in time on Christmas morning after having traveled back from France. I mean, it's a Christmas movie after all. And no one has called DCF over the fact that these parents managed to leave the country without their seven-year-old. Of course not. No, no one has ever talked about all the counseling that poor Kevin is going to need after spending days abandoned by his family and attacked by burglars. No, instead, it's a happy ending because we know in this season, everything has to end with joy and hope and peace. There's Elf, right, with Buddy. Buddy the Elf is reunited with his just horrendous dad, right? This guy who's just a jerk of a person. And there's really no rationale as to why he changes in the movie. He just does. All of a sudden, you know, he, he accepts Buddy as his son. And that's because it's Christmas. That's what happens. Even the Griswold family in Christmas Vacation, for all the shenanigans that happens with that family, you know, at the very end when the credits roll, they're experiencing the joy of the season. Now you and I know, especially if you've come from a Griswold family yourself, the things don't come together perfectly in the end like this, do they? And Christmas for some of us is not a holiday with happy endings. And yet every Christmas movie has one. Why is that? Because we've been conditioned to believe that's what the Christmas season is supposed to be about. But listen, I want you to hear me on this. You cannot manufacture peace, hope, joy with commercials, carols, and movies, not even cool decorations in your house. Those will only take you so far. You have to have something greater than just Christmas spirit. And I would suggest to you that we need a source for that joy that runs deeper, a resource that will enable us to endure pain and difficulty and even death itself and, and still have that capital J joy as a bedrock under there. Every year we need something like that, but especially this one, right? I mean, what gives your life a sense of joy that can sustain a year like 2020 has been? Let me tell you what I have discovered. Yesterday marked seven years since my family lost our baby girl, Ava. About halfway through Jennifer's pregnancy, we learned that our daughter growing inside of her, Ava, had trisomy 18. And she would likely have a very short life. And it was terrible and painful, something that was almost impossible to face. We spent the next four months hopeful that we might be able to just get a chance to hold our precious girl and spend a few moments with her, while at the same time mourning the knowledge that we would not likely get to keep her for very long. During the very last OB appointment that we had before the due date, we listened for her heartbeat together there in the doctor's office. We couldn't find it. It was silent. In the seven years since we lost our sweet little girl, Ava, each December 12th, we light a candle in my house. We place it in the center of our home for the entire day. And it's a precious reminder. We mourn her loss, of course we do. But I'm not sharing the story with you today to seek sympathy. I mean, we light that candle every year because it's a reminder that Ava is with her heavenly father right now. I mean, we named her Ava because it means living one. And that candle reminds us of the joy, capital J joy, that we will have one day when we get to meet her, along with the one 
who came to make that reunion possible, the one who promises to wipe every tear from our eyes. See, he's light that breaks through the darkness. My candle reminds us of that. The testimony of the power of God to defeat sin and death. Jesus' arrival means that we can have joy. We're not talking about happiness. Happiness is overrated. It's circumstantial. And if you're chasing happiness in this life, I pity you. I really do. Because happiness is fleeting. If you try to establish your life on the premise that you just want to be happy, the difficulties that you face in this life, the, the pain and the loss will defeat your joy at every turn. That happiness will be impossible to put your arms around and hold on to. 2020 happens, okay? It needs to be a t-shirt. Please understand, Jesus didn't come for our happiness. No, he came for our joy, capital J. And there's an ocean of difference between the two things. Joy runs down deep in our hearts and permeates our lives so that even in the midst of pain, even in the midst of loss, it remains. It's steadfast. It's an anchor that holds in turbulent seas. Joy is the abiding understanding that God is faithful. We can trust him. It's the quiet confidence that ultimately he is making all things new. It's the determination to praise him in all circumstances because he is working all things together for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose, even when we don't see that in the moment. And if you believe, just as the angel declared, that the child lying in the manger that night was the promised savior, Messiah for all humanity, Emmanuel, God with us, then you can join with them in that chorus. Glory to God in the highest. This is good news that will bring joy to all people. Highlight that all people part, right? This isn't just for those of us who have been good, you know, the, the guys on Santa Claus good list, you know, they get in, ones on the back. This is joy that's available to everyone, no matter your story, no matter what side of the tracks you were born on, no matter what mistakes you've made or choices you regret, you can come and experience the joy of the light of the world that has been given to us. See, I believe that Jesus is the resource we all need to have true joy a lasting joy that sustains our lives no matter what. And he offers that joy to us without reservation, full of grace, not because we've earned it, but because he loves us that much. I mean, you can spend your whole life searching for something to satisfy that deep longing in your heart, only to find over time that nothing can quench that thirst for more. But the beauty of Advent, the beauty of Christmas, is this. There is good news that will bring great joy to all people. God didn't wait for us to come to him. He came searching for us. The Savior your heart is truly longing for has come for you. He's so generous, so gracious. Jesus our Savior, God in the flesh, can bring our lives lasting joy. Now, what do you do? What do you do with news that's that good? I mean, what, what do you do with it? I hope that you'll embrace it for yourself. Put your faith in it. I do. But but I think that there's more that we can do with it. Let's look at what the shepherds did with that good news when they heard it. 
In Luke 2 and verse 16, this is the rest of the story. It says, the shepherds hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told to them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. And then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had seen and heard, which were just as they had been told. The good news that is joy for us prompts us to share that joy with others. And that's what the shepherds did. They couldn't contain it. You know, God's rich generosity towards them in that moment resulted in them having to go tell everyone else about it. And that's what it should do in us too. His generosity should result in lives that reflect that giving heart. And that's the motivation for giving. You know, that, that second phrase from Advent Conspiracy is give more. You know, it's really birthed out of this concept you found find elsewhere in scripture. Um, there's this phrase, it's better to give than receive. And that's a truth God has established by his own example. And all the evidence that we need is found in the manger that the angel announced on that first Christmas night. When the shepherds saw Jesus, they discovered the source of joy. And then they spread that good news. May their tribe increase. And we, may we count ourselves among them, those who can embrace the Savior who was born for us, glorify our God for his graciousness, and reflect his generous heart in the way that we live and move and breathe. Give more. Reflect the heart of God by sharing the joy that he has brought to your life. Let's pray about that. Father, thanks for an announcement that we get to hear all these years later. And as we read about the angelic proclamation to the shepherds, there is great joy that will be for all people. We're a part of that. That joy is for us. Thank you, Father for being so gracious. And I certainly know that not every day feels joyous. There is so much challenge and difficulty and pain in this world that we endure. So we pray for you to remind us that you have broken through the darkness for us. We can hold on to you. And that is a sustaining joy that endures even in difficult times. And it prompts something in us too, Father. I pray that it would manifest in our lives with the desire to be just as generous as you've been to us. May that be true as your spirit works its way through our heart, it spills out of us into the lives of those around us. May the joy of this season be shared something that we give away. Father, that's our desire. We pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to spend just a moment reflecting on a time of remembrance, because it's one thing to send Jesus into the world as a baby, and if that's the end of the story, I suppose it's, it's very sweet and it's precious, but the reality is that baby grew up and gave his life he took our sin and our shame, and he bore that himself when he died on the cross. And then three days later, he rose from the dead. He defeated sin and the grave. And that's, that's why we can really have joy, because that forgiveness is ours when we place our trust in him. And so when we take the cup and take the bread, we remember these tactile things that we get to taste. It's a way of drawing us back to that sacrifice in gratitude, in a time of reflection, and acknowledging our debt. And my prayer uh, 
a step forward into modeling that same kind of love, sacrificial for others. So if you've got the elements, the bread and the cup, use, use whatever you have on hand that would resemble those and let's partake together as we reflect on our gracious Savior. Uh, and now a benediction. May you live this week with an eternal perspective. Live as if God has come among us, because he has. Live as if God has revealed himself to you and called you to love and do good works, because he has. Live in anticipation of the reconciliation of all creation to God, because it is coming. Live as if your life depended upon God's grace, because it does. And live to celebrate the advent of our Messiah, Jesus Christ, praising the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.
Amen. Go in peace and live the church.